All right, hello everybody and welcome to the Frantic Talks podcast, episode 69. I am your host, Frantic. With me, as always, is my lovely co-host. Grant. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And uh, we're here to talk about gaming. And junk. And junk. So today we're going to talk about E3 and everything that came out of it, including what we wanted to see, if we saw it, and other thoughts and random things related to all of it. This is going to be a jam-packed episode. Hopefully we don't spend too much time on how our week went, because it was mostly focused on E3 and playing games, naturally. So so anyways, before we start all of that, we are going to start off with where you can find us to continue this conversation. Give us like your thoughts on E3 and all that great stuff. So the easiest way to reach us, Twitter. I am at FranticJ3. He is at Onyx Spartan, O-N-Y-X Spartan, all one word. Uh, he's that, that's where you can find him at frantic underscore talks is the official frantic talks twitter account that's where all we uh is where we tweet all of our podcasts and articles and all that great stuff uh <clears throat> also hit up our special podcast ghost freak show 187 he is uh our special podcast ghost best way to put that really um likes his puns resident, can, resident pun master yes resident pun master he will puntify something and also turn uh laugh at your puns if you have them uh <clears throat> i am so glad you worked pontify in there Thank you so much. I was hoping you would do that. Something you'll, yeah, something you'll find <laughs> out very quickly as we like to make up words here. So uh, have fun with that. <laughs> uh, just start like Urban Dictionary pages or something. <laughs> uh, also, so if you want to join in on this live like Brock has done in the chat right now, uh, and as many other have done in the past, you can head over to twitch.tv forward slash frantic talks, all one word. That is where you can join us live every Saturday, usually at 3 p.m. Eastern, usually. That is a uh, asterisk because sometimes our schedules don't work out that way. Sometimes we don't go live, uh, but we never fail to give a podcast every week now. So that's that, that's a good thing uh, because we pre-record stuff is what happens there. So that's where you can get the live version of it. But hey, maybe you missed the live version. Maybe you're busy every Saturday or you can't catch the episodes. That's okay. We post it on the website, frantitalks.com, but you can also head over to YouTube to get early access to it, quote unquote early access, uh, because we upload it literally after we go live versus on the website, franticTalks.com. We give it out every Monday. So subscribe over on YouTube, which is youtube.com, search up Frantic Talks, and then obviously click the subscribe button. Once we get 100 subscribers, I can give you a nice URL to hand out to your friends instead of making you go do all these three step procedures. Uh, also, head over to facebook.com forward slash frantic talks, all one word, like the page, like 134 other people have done, so you can get basically a more Facebook form of Twitter. But that's not to say it isn't uh, useful because it has a much more engaging way of having conversations. Definitely uh, useful if you have Facebook and like Facebook. Uh, last but not least, if all that fails, head over to franticTalks.com. Like I had mentioned, where every Monday you're going to get a podcast. Every Wednesday you are going to get a weekly column from either me, Grunt, or Freak Show. And you will also get every Friday the Chronicles of AWE, which is a wrestling simulator article that Freak Show does where he simulates a month of in-game wrestling that he has uh, called the AWE, the Awesome Wrestling Entertainment. It's a really fun read. He has some really cool storylines going on with the characters, and I think you'll enjoy it if you're a big fan of uh, WWE wrestlers because he uses all real wrestlers. So... <clears throat> If all that, oh, also, there's, sorry, there's a magic.franticTalks.com for the Magic the Gathering articles that we definitely need to update. But uh, if all else fails, if uh, you can't seem to find us, can't figure it out, uh, grunt 100 times out of 10, what can you do? Direct yourself to your favorite search engine and just search Frantic Talks. You will find uh, us. Absolutely. 101 times out of 10. 101 times out of 10. Eventually, we're going to have to turn it into like a, uh, oh, what's the word? Uh, you can do it backwards and forwards. Is it palindrome? Yes. Yeah. Eventually, Wrong we can turn. Coward. <laughs> Eventually, we could turn it into that, like a hundred and a uh, thousand ten times out of ten. Well, that's not a palindrome. Well, technically, there's a zero <laughs> in the front. It's only a palindrome if it has Icarus and Rangefinder. Anyways, come on, guys. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> a little destiny joke for you. All right. So normally we start this Bravo. off. Bravo. I try my best, but uh, normally we start this off by asking one simple question, and that question is, Grunt, how was your week? Filled with E3. Rightfully well, so. By, like Pretty much after last Saturday's um, podcast, last week's episode, I pretty much tuned on, tuned on? I turned on the uh, EA press conference and watched it and just did not do anything else for the rest of the weekend. Just absorbed all the information from uh, Microsoft, Sony, Ubisoft, I missed the Nintendo one. I feel like Bethesda, that's the other one I was missing, just absorbed all the information that I possibly could from their conferences. So mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be the topic of our episode, so I'll save everything else for there. Otherwise, most of it was just spent playing games and stuff. 
played most the Destiny with you in uh, Freak Show this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I missed out on the Rocket League, sadly. There was some really great uh, Rocket League. There was. There really was, from what I saw of it, anyhow. Living vicariously through you guys. <laughs> oh, you know it. Uh, picked up Forza Horizon 3 through the Xbox Game Store because it was on sale for $30, and it's a game I've been asking for since it came out, pretty much. So, hey, it's on sale. Might as well grab it now. Seems uh, fair. It's been fun to play. It's you know, basically classic Forza set in Australia. Huge open world, so it's it's fun. It's fun just to race a uh, half a million to a quarter, three quarters of a million dollar car around and just watch it get destroyed because I don't know how to drive cars and video games that well. Speaking of living vicariously, <laughs> you just get to see the whole Australia. Like, like the racing simulators, they get to throw really nice graphics at you because it, it doesn't have to focus on all kinds of crazy explosions on screen. So I feel like it's they not make Michael it... Play the game. Yeah, exactly. So I, I feel like they make it... Uh, I don't know. They make it real realistic, and it doesn't take away from it by any means. Right. Yeah. Definitely having the nice sceneries as backdrops are great because mm-hmm. it makes you know racing around the countryside basically a lot more enjoyable because you get to see it if you even pay attention going at 150 plus miles an hour. Um, Probably not. I, I don't. Just oh, that was a tree. Thank God I just about missed it. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'm actually going to see about taking some screenshots from it if I can, because th- that's what I do. I take screenshots from games way more than I care to admit. Yeah, they're really good screenshots, to be fair. Oh, well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, only other thing I spent doing was I got Rocksmith yesterday, and it's... Think of Guitar Hero, only using your actual guitar yep. that you have, and with a more so an emphasis on actually learning how to play the songs and learning different techniques and that stuff. Um, I played with it for a little bit last night, and it was a lot of fun. And I learned some stuff, and I think it's going to be cool. I haven't had too much time with it, so... But there's a cool new feature that I think you'll like. It's uh, got it to where you can uh, set up a band, and basically they play along with you. Mm, so yeah. as you play, they'll play. As you stop playing, they'll stop playing. They change their the way they're playing based on how you play too. So it's kind of cool. I think it's something you would definitely take an interest in, considering you are making your own music. Yes, uh, so, that definitely sounds like a lot of fun to get the ideas flowing. And just sure. in general, it's a lot of fun to mess around in. Yeah, so far from what I found. So that's pretty much how my week was. Mm-hmm. Game, filled with games, E3, and playing some of my own here and there. Okay. Oh, yours. Well, mine was uh, mine was pretty good. So I actually, I, so I was gonna mention on Rocksmith, I had a friend tell me to buy it and play it with him. Uh, he's the dude I've been in a band with hundred different times in my past, so he and I could jam together over the internet. Uh, so I thought about getting that. So glad to hear that you like it too, because it's just like. I don't. I don't take everybody right at the first thing they say. Go buy this. I like. I like hearing other people mention it too. So, uh, oh, yeah. either way, um, my week was pretty good because I ended up actually taking a week off of work. So, wh- why I took a week off of work was not because of E three, but it happily coincided with E three uh, and worked very well in my favor. Uh, but basically, this yesterday I was at Origins in Columbus, Ohio, which is this big gaming convention where you go in and buy board games, play test board games, and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Uh, it's always really fun, and I'll post my uh, loot stuff that I have in the other room to my Instagram, which is just franticj3 if you're curious. Uh, I'll post it there. Yeah, I, I, I do every year. I always post my uh, haul, and this year I got a big haul of awesome stuff. Uh, and so far, every game we've played has been amazing. Uh, I delve more into those, but we're here to talk about E3, not those. I might talk about them more next week when I get to play them more than once. But either I way... Just, I just want to visit the place where you found all the dice. Like, you should not have shown me that picture. You know how much I love dice, man. Was it was a horrible. It was a booth that had every type of dice that wasn't normal, like a D4, D6, D8. It had a D3, D5, D7, D9, D11, 12, 14, 14. They were all there. Uh, those are really cool. So... Anyways, uh, 
what did we predict from E3? Tons and tons of loot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Destiny 2, yeah, we'll talk about that. God, that annoyed the crap out of me. Anyways, the uh, rest of my week uh, was just playing video games, like Grunin said, but essentially I kind of sat on my ass in a room over there, played a bunch of video games, including a lot of Red Dead Redemption, which I had yet to actually play, and I'm loving the shit out of that game. And then I played Destiny and Rocket League uh, a lot with Freak Show and a lot with Grunt. Uh, Freak Show was on most of the time with me, but Grunt was coming in and out depending on the day. Uh, got no sleep. Well, I mean, I got sleep, but I was more focused on staying up and playing because I normally don't get to. Uh, so we had a lot of fun uh, doing Iron Banana early on and then just screwing around in either the Crucible or Strikes. Apparently it was not our week for playing video games. We did very poorly in every game we played. If it wasn't against the AI, yeah, we were we were going to annihilate in the Crucible. And then Rocket League, we started off okay and then had a one good game and then just got steamrolled by the next like three or four people. So it was like, this is this is not our week. Just need some time <laughs> away from the games for the next like day or two and get back to them next week and hopefully I won't be terrible, but... That was essentially my week. Nothing too much to talk about. Like I said, the biggest thing was the convention last night, along with the Smithy Award Show, which is an award show for shitty movies yes. that we go to, which is amazing. If you ever get the chance, there's one in Ann Arbor that they do. It's the same people, and they also do one in Columbus. I don't know the Ann Arbor date, but if you go to the Smithy's website, and it's not spelled S M. Okay, so it is spelled S-M-I-T-H-E-E-S. Not a normal way to spell it is what I was trying to say. So that is... Something that's awesome. They uh, post all the awards and how terrible the movies are. It's great. Uh, give that a look. It's like a five-hour award show. It's long, but it's it's wonderful in many bad ways. So that was my it's week. Wonderful in many bad ways. Yes, it really is. Uh, 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 that's the takeaway. I mean, so okay, it's an award show for the worst movies out there. So yes, it's good in a bad way. Yeah, Shark Attack Three, Shark to Puss, Megalodon, all this fun stuff that are just terrible, terrible movies. Uh, yeah, Shark to Puss. It was, I, don't it was, even, I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. Bird Dimmick is actually there. Aethis Coden. I actually don't know how to say her name. I apologize. But Bird Dimmick is a uh, Bird Dimmick and Bird Dimmick Two were both in the award show and won a lot of awards. Not this year. Uh, a couple years ago. Uh, but yes. Fifty Shades Darker. I definitely don't even want to know about that one. <laughs> so uh, it's just very very bad movies. But anyways, let's 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 get to the main topic of today which is E3. Now, you'll notice that last week, uh, our podcast, the number 68, which we mentioned uh, having creating two new words. I don't actually remember the words. I'm sure we'll come up with them again. Pontify was one of them, I believe. Yeah, I don't remember Pontify or pontifical, and uh, it was like well, flat-formed. Oh, so yeah, something like that. Uh, ponti pontifical was a whole episode. It's got its own name. Oh, that's right. I, I, I'm pretty sure flat was. Now i got to go back and watch that. So, uh, we... Uh, we predicted what we wanted to see from E3, what we thought we might see, and overall were pretty accurate on the most part. A couple things we were just like, we really want to see this, and heard literally nothing about. Uh, I'm looking at you, potentially a new Elder Scrolls game or Borderlands type thing, you know, all that good <laughs> stuff that we were just kind of high hopes, and if it shows up, it would be very unprecedented, but we kind of wished it would show up. Uh, but anyways, we're going we're gonna to start it. We're going to do this in an order. Uh, I picked an order that, to me, is about how important each one was related to how much we play the types of things. Uh, and I, I think it kind of reflects Grunt, maybe a little different. I don't know. But we're going to start off with one we both didn't watch and get it out of the way, which was the Nintendo press release. Uh, the Nintendo at E3, essentially. So I'm going to have in the background the titles from Polygon's uh, website, and if we need to reference it at all, we might. But overall, it's really just going to be us talking about it. So... Um, I say that because we normally like to try to show you in the background what's going on. But for the most part, it's just going to be kind of like, here's what we're talking about right now. Uh, so Nintendo at E3, we were both playing Destiny at the time, I think, when it came on. And then about an hour or two later, we were like, oh, we missed that. <laughs> Is yes. more or less what, what yes. happened. Um, but the subtitle says it all. Rocket League is what? coming to Nintendo. Um, Kirby, a new game. There's a new Yoshi game. They are working on a Pokemon game. A new Metroid, and uh, you Pseudo know, new Metroids. I heard. Is it two? Okay. I I think I don't know. I'm not for sure. Like I, like I said, I didn't catch anything from the Nintendo conference, and I don't own a Nintendo system, so I'm not too keen on keeping an eye on them. That's terrible of me. I know. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I <laughs> but I believe it's definitely one, if not two. I think maybe one for the Switch, and maybe. One for the DS, I would think. DS, I would think, yes. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it's crazy because there hasn't been a new Metroid game in forever, so it just kind of came up. And what's really funny was that the Metroid announcement was just a title screen, just like a, lo a logo with music, nothing else. Uh, so they were literally just like, we thought of this as an idea. Uh, and that's been confirmed now by our good friend. I, just, I, I don't know how to say your man, name, man. Uh, I'm going to call you Coden because that's the last half of your name. He says there would be two Metroids. <laughs> I don't know how to say your name, but thanks for the tip, Coden. Atheist Coden, maybe, is how we say that. We're going to just, like, ramble on about that until we actually get, a, like, a straight-up answer, I imagine. Right. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah, so Rocket League, Kirby, Yoshi, Pokemon, Metroid. Uh, the Pokemon one's really funny because they were like, we're doing Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And people were like, oh, you mean for the Switch? But it's kind of just the same thing. Oh, you guys should make an open world type Pokemon on the Switch. You know, that makes sense. Come on. And then they were finally like, okay, shut up okay, in the development. Fine. Okay, fine. We'll do it. We'll do it. God. Peer so, pressure, yeah. man. Yeah, peer, peer pressure in the best sense, though, because that's something that just should happen. I remember when we announced the Switch, I was like, that should be a thing. I remember saying that. I was like, you need, right. a, you need a Pokemon game a lot like the handheld ones, but totally different. Uh, no Pokemon Stadium type stuff. That, that isn't going to fly anymore. Right. Uh, yeah, you definitely. The Switch needs to have a Pokemon game, and it's mm -hmm. getting its own, so that's definitely definitely good on their part. We've got confirmation it is Ethius. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's awesome. Uh, having only just played on a Switch for the first time like a week or two ago, I don't know if I even mentioned this, but that thing is small. Have you seen one? I have seen one, yes. Okay, I, Someone it, that uh, I play Magic with bought one when they first came out oh okay and the, the kickstand of his broke off that night and it was like only a few days after they released it's like wow that sucks it just mm. pops on and off so it's not like it's ruined but <laughs> yeah I, I guess that's a good thing but I, I just it was so small i was expecting like a like a playstation 4 size console type thing and it was like half that maybe like right uh, but I mean, it's portable, and they, I assume they didn't want you to have to carry a backpack around or something like that just to get it everywhere. So, uh, makes sense. I just, for some reason, was not expecting it to be as small as it was. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely nice. You can fit into mm -hmm. a little bag or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Extra so, slot on your gaming bag. Also, yeah, exactly. I guess they are coming out with different Joy-Con control, different colored Joy-Con controllers for it, so... I've yeah, seen, like, that, that sounds one, right. I believe. Oh, probably with Pikachu on it in some manner. Well, I have no idea. Hey, they they got to milk their characters, and like Ethia said, the, the at least ten million switches are going to be sold with the Pokemon announcement. So you know, oh, definitely, that's going. That is definitely going to move move consoles. Yeah. So uh, move that's, units. Official PR talk. Yeah, sorry, move units. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get, we got to be politically correct here. Anyways, uh, Rocket League is the only thing I was going to mention because Rocket League coming to the Switch is awesome because now it's on like every platform ever. Uh, and apparently Sony what? is the only holdout. <laughs> crossplay, why? Oh. Crossplay, yeah. Uh, that's that's the big thing. So if you are upset about crossplay, uh, yell at Sony because apparently Microsoft's right. fine with it. So it's a Switch and all. Everybody's fine, but Sony's like no. Which I thought it would be the other way around. I figured it would be yeah. Microsoft. Uh, well, Microsoft was really the first people to say, hey, let's do this with Rocket League. They're like, okay, you play Rocket League on your Xbox. Why don't you play with people on the PC? And then they're like, okay, sure. Yeah, I, th I think the... Uh, they're... Like, you get to play with people on the PC or the Nintendo Switch. Great! Yeah, exactly. I, I was thinking that uh their whole windows games with windows or whatever where they had a uh, you can play windows 10 games at the same time like an xbox and stuff where they're trying to move it all to one oh, it's their platform plot. type idea their uh, uh, play anywhere titles yes yeah that's what it's called i couldn't remember the name of it but that, that's 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 my thinking there is that they're trying to push the whole we're losing console exclusivity stuff let's just not do console exclusivity guys come on what are you doing like yeah i'm, I'm sure that's sure that's in the back of their mind so that i think that about does it for nintendo uh not too much else to cover since uh, one we didn't watch it uh super mario odyssey i don't think i actually said anything but i you did not say anything about super mario odyssey uh brock claims it's a great trailer so definitely give that trailer a watch i'll give it a watch right after this video i feel bad not having watched it but i was uh pressed for time and didn't get a chance to check it out so uh that being said we're going to move on now to uh sony and uh that was an interesting piece of paper here i have for notes <laughs> Which is currently being held up so it doesn't fall by an engram, by the way. 
<laughs> well then, um, so this was a this was an interesting. It's, it's a legendary engram. Insert whatever destiny <laughs> pun you want here about that. <laughs> uh, I can't think of any. Where's Freak Show when we need him? All right. So uh, Sony announced a lot of stuff, a lot of console exclusive games, and uh, some virtual reality stuff that was really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh. So it was polarizing is the best way to put it. I got a text during the announcements, like during the for the show, uh, from a friend of mine who primarily plays. Actually, it's Corky, uh, the guy who most likely attracted most of our listeners in the chat. Uh, Corky texted me saying, Sony's killing it. Uh, and I was watching it at the time, and I was like, yeah, they're not doing too bad. Uh, and then when I went on to like Reddit and stuff, people were hating the shit out of it. Uh, I don't know why. Um, I will buy a PlayStation to solely play that new Spider-Man game. Um, yes, yes, you will. Uh, but for the most part, there was a lot of stuff that was announced, like Shadow of the Colossus remake. There was the new Spider-Man game. They showed off some of the new multiplayer for Call of Duty World War II. Uh, they showed off some, like, biker zombie game, which was really interesting. I don't, I don't know how to react to that one. Uh, they had this really cryptic VR game with uh, Elijah Wood in it. Uh, there was a lot of crazy stuff that they announced. And a lot of interesting but cryptic things. But we didn't get any Death Stranding information. Uh, I'm sure many people are upset about that. And When the time uh, is ready. Right, yeah. I assume they don't. They either didn't have anything to show, or it wouldn't have. It would have given too much away because so far they've never really. They haven't really told us anything about the game, right. uh, except the name and Norman Reedus, and I forget the other guy's name, but he's also a really popular actor. Uh, are all in it, right? So, uh, I don't know. It's probably due to the fact that I don't own a PlayStation, so I'm primarily an Xbox user. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm not overly impressed with what they have, but. There were a few things that looked good. Um, just, you know, Shadow of Colossus, I know people have wanted that a lot. Mm-hmm. They've wanted to play the game a lot, and since they don't have a backwards compa- compatibility feature, I don't think. Um, you know, a remake is about as the best thing you can get, plus better graphics, better than game overall. Yeah. Um, I just I didn't see too much that really excited me from it. So yeah, I felt like, a little underwhelmed. You know, I'll, I understand that a lot of the stuff you see during these briefings from these companies is uh, a mix of new games that they're coming out with, or basically product updates, saying, "Oh yeah, we made some progress on the, the game that we announced last year. Here's a trailer and some game footage." Mm-hmm. I felt like that's big portion of what their conference was, was just saying, okay, we're at the point now where we can show off a trailer for this game. Here it is. Next. Yeah, so I, I, I see that. That, that. that might sound a little too harsh, I guess. But it's just, it is how I felt. It's like, there wasn't too much new there for me. Yeah, and that's the thing, and what Ethius says in the chat sums up kind of what we said last week. Uh, they showed a lot of the same stuff we kind of already knew about, except, you know, VR and Shadow of the Colossus. And right. that's something Sony does, is they announce a lot of stuff way in advance. I mean, look at Death Stranding. That was, I imagine that was just an idea, and they displayed it, and people got hyped about it. Like, right. they are very, they work very far in advance, and they announce stuff much more in advance. So when it comes to newer stuff, and E3, where they're showing off more of the stuff they've announced, we're definitely going to feel underwhelmed, because we've kind of already heard about it. We're not finding out that in three months we're going to get some brand new game that looks amazing, you know, like or something like Shadow of the Colossus 2 or something crazy like that. Uh, right. Kind of like how Bethesda did Fallout last year. Or not last year, but the year before. Right. Or was it last year? I don't remember. I think it was the year, uh, it was the year before. Two so 2015. Years ago. Two years ago for Bethesda. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, so, hey, Fallout 4. Oh, comes out in about three months, by the way. Four months. Yeah, yeah so I, I think a lot of the stuff they showed looked good. But at the same time, I think it makes sense why people were upset. I suppose when I I said earlier it it didn't make too much sense because yeah they've they've seen it all uh, for the most part. The VR stuff again was intriguing and interesting, Uh, but other than that, we kind of knew about most of it. Right. So that that essentially sums it up. They they did a very good presentation. Don't get me wrong. It's not like it was just oh you know same shit different day, but it was definitely it was a cool show to watch, uh, even though they fucked up the audio in the beginning, but. uh, I mean, I understand how. That's a rhetorical question. But right, yeah, they they just screwed that up. At least on the stream I was watching, and I know the stream you were watching too, Grunt. Um, uh, yeah, I was watching the 
one straight from Sony themselves, the broadcast from them, and then I switched over to GameSpot, which was basically just rebroadcasting the Sony stream. So, yeah, I was watching the one two that, channels like, kind of have Twitch the same page. Thing. Yeah, and then yeah. I switched over to uh, IGN, and they they had me covered. Okay. Yeah, I was having trouble with the stream the whole time. I thought it was the internet at the at the place I was watching it at, but apparently not. But it just kept skipping out on me, and I kept having to exit the app and get back into it and miss a few minutes or something. Uh, right. So I mean, but that's not that's nothing against Sony in their presentation. That was just the, the stream itself. Uh, you know, those things like uh, Last of Us Two, I believe, was shown, right? No, uh, or am I wrong? No. I am I mixing remember. that up with uh, other Naughty Dog? Uh, um, I don't know. Well, I know they did uh, know Uncharted, a new like an Uncharted spinoff. Yeah, uh, I think I might be mixing that up. Uncharted thing coming up, I think. I guess it shows how much we remembered from the stream because we didn't really. I mean, <laughs> I, I missed the Uncharted thing because I was late tuning into the stream. They kicked it off, and I, I tuned in on like the first last probably minute or so of the Uncharted stuff. So. Yeah, it was not Last of Us. For some reason, I thought that was shown. So Uncharted last. Lost Legacy. That not was the Last name of it. Us too. Thank you, Brock. That's the name of it. So uh, that about sums it up. Obviously, if you guys uh, don't, uh, you guys aren't sure if you agree with us or if you just want to catch it all and not to listen to us, give you the Cliff Notes version. Uh, yeah, you obviously can go check out all the tw- uh, the streams on YouTube or Twitch. Probably has them somewhere archived. Uh, nice. Should be easy to find, I assume. So next, we're going to move on. Unless we have anything else to add. I do want to admit the God of War trailer looked pretty cool. Yes, God of War is another game that I really am upset I don't have a PlayStation to play. That does look like a very cool game. Or, as I saw tweeted a lot that night, Dad of War. Dad of War, <laughs> basically, because it's he's got a kid now that is kind of focusing on two, and he's got this big old beard, and ah, jeez. But, but, plays on the game title aside, it did look like a nice trailer. Yeah. It's probably what I liked the most from... from that aside from the destiny 2 trailer we got to see so yeah and that spider-man game looks really cool it it reminds me of the amazing spider-man 2 game that came out that coincided with the movie uh and that game i remember that that game looked great from all the gameplay and stuff and i was actually reminded of it a lot in that gameplay but that game was terrible i I finished it in like three hours actually with all the costumes unlocked in that short amount of time mind you Uh, granted it wasn't a full price game it was like forty bucks compared to sixty, but it was you know, so boring and short, and was not challenging even on the hardest difficulty. Like, I'm hoping it's not just that, but longer, because there was a lot of issues with like uh, it, it. Basically, is taking Batman Arkham Asylum and slapping Spider Man on it. So it's like the combat system isn't as fluent because they didn't make it right. So I mean, I, I, there's a lot of stuff about that game that sucked. So I'm hoping maybe they reconcile that. Obviously, this isn't—I don't think this is made by the same people, but it has a lot of the same elements as you would with the Spider-Man game, I suppose. Right. So. You know, back in my day, games only cost forty dollars. Oh my god! I still remember PlayStation Two games being fifty bucks and then raising to sixty. Yep, I remember that. Halo Two, I think, was the last game I bought for forty dollars, and that was the freaking collector's edition. And now we have uh, games like Assassin's Creed Origins that have a freaking eight hundred dollar collection collector's edition. Well, speaking of Ubisoft, let's talk about that. Yes, let's talk about that. <laughs> I had it pulled up Great right when you said that. It was unintended. <laughs> hey, it works. Uh, so uh, on screen, you'll see Shigeru Miyamoto and uh, good old Ubisoft director. Uh, God damn it, I don't remember his name. Uh, he's there. They're holding I can props. It, but I don't know. Yes. Uh, they're holding props from the new Mario and Rabbids game. Yes. Uh, which is interesting party-based crossover type game that takes place in the Mario world. It's like a portal opened up and they came there and the portal let a bunch of stuff in. Uh, Brock, I'm going to try to pronounce that. Uh, oh, please do. Please do. Please do. Yves, Yves Guimont. Close enough. Yves Guimont. It's really weird, but that that's a, he, he's very... He's very um, he's he's foreign. He's not very foreign. He's just literally foreign. So of course he has a it's name that French. is hard for me to pronounce. French. Uh, yeah, Ubisoft has a lot of French connections in there. Yeah. Company. So yes. And Brock brings up a good point. It's literally XCOM, but with Mario and rabbits. Uh, that that's mm. that seems accurate. <laughs> Cut content from the last XCOM game. 
bitch <laughs> basically well, that's a whole uh, discussion in its own right there but yes it does look interesting um i i can see the xcom comparison there i can actually see it and i've never played xcom i've just <laughs> seen footage of it so i'm on the yeah. same page actually but uh so they announced that, of course, that was a big part of it. They had Shigeru Miyamoto, who's, got, who's involved with it, uh, which gives it a little more hope because it seems like one of those just like rip-off crossover titles, but maybe not. I mean, we'll see. Uh, I'm not a fan of Rabbids, so I, I literally don't care, but that's cool that it's a thing. I don't understand why Miyamoto showed up with props that they didn't even get to shoot or use. It was just kind of... There. Missed opportunity for a t-shirt cannon, honestly. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought they were. I thought they were just going to walk out and start shooting out t-shirt cannons. No, it's just a bullet bill and like gun with a mario side scroll painted on it like it just exists uh but also they announced some other stuff uh ubisoft having the interesting displays that they normally do um everyone knew when it was time to talk about the new dance dance game or whatever uh, the actual name of it is uh, dance central i believe yeah dance central uh that was really weird they had like a panda and some other girls i think they were singing in japanese yeah. maybe not i don't know I don't understand what happened. I don't think anyone Ubisoft, do, really does. Ubisoft, I <laughs> over my years of watching E3, I have always heard that Ubisoft has had the best conferences. I didn't actually get to see one until a couple of years ago because I actually sat down and watched it, and it's like, oh my god, what, <laughs> like, is, what the hell is happening? Hap- I, I feel I, like there's some subliminal message they're trying to send, and uh, with a dancing panda. You you never know, man. There was actually a rap song called Panda that was on the top of the charts. I'm sure you've heard it. Um, yes, they uh, new toys to life. Uh, Star Wars uh, or not Starlink? Star, Star Wars. It's called Starlink. Uh, it's one of those in the realm of ha. Uh, what is it? Skylanders? Uh, um, where you amiibos? Yeah, amiibos and stuff like that. Where you, Skylanders you, you, you would be another one. Yes. Yeah, you you buy a- extra peripherals to like kind of like put them into the game. Uh, right. So it's it's just one of those. I, I don't like the concept because it's just a way to basically make you pay sixty dollars for almost a game and then have to go buy extra stuff to make a full game. You mean like uh, DLC? It's just yeah. It's essentially hard DLC. Uh, so hard LC. But no, mean- D- DLC is downloadable. What am I talking about? Hard loadable content. Actually, no, that's H-L-C. right. Yeah, <laughs> that's really that makes sense. Even, oh wow. What are we H-L-C. Even doing here? I told you we make up words, guys. <laughs> <laughs> It looks interesting. Um, I didn't care too much for it because, you know, it's the same reason like you just said. It, mm-hmm. You buy the game, then you have to buy all the peripherals on top of it, and don't have the money for stuff like that, but I don't have the room for it, honestly. Well, it, yeah, the thing is, is it, it pretty much is targeted towards kids whose parents will buy them what they want, right. or they'll, you know, they'll, they'll buy them something that either because they want it or because they want the kid to just shut the hell up. Uh <laughs> Great parenting, by the way, but that's that's a fact. <laughs> is that they just true? They just they'll they'll buy something for their kids because I mean it was one thing to get your thing your kid things they want. It's another to invest hundreds of dollars into something that they'll get a little bit of in, entertainment out of. I suppose. Uh, I don't know. This never really made me look uh, made me interested in it, and I didn't really once I saw that it was one of those they loaded in. I actually stopped watching. Uh, so I can't say, I can't comment on like the gameplay or anything like that. Uh, Brock says the gameplay in- interests him, so uh, I might go back and watch that again just to be safe and be like, oh, I guess that does look kind of fun. Yeah, who knows? Right. Uh, it's it's like the equivalent of a freemium game where it's like you could play it, but you could be better if you paid more money. Uh, but you, right. you, it's not free, so. Right. <clears throat> and then also Assassin's Creed, right? Right, Assassin's Creed Origins. They showed off some, they gave us a trailer. They originally announced the game and uh, outside of leaks they officially announced the game during the uh, microsoft conference uh during ubisoft conference they gave us a little bit longer trailer i believe and after the conference they gave us like half hour of actual gameplay footage that they (coughs) streamed from their home base yes and uh it looks I, i haven't played the recent assassin's creed games i've only ever played the first one so all the stuff that was in it looked really cool Oh, yes. me. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan to begin with, so I'm obviously biased. Um so I'm excited for the game. It looks interesting. My only concern is the reason they took and moved it from its annual release cycle is to refresh the series. How are they going to do that? 
because from what gameplay footage I've seen of it, it looks this like the same Assassin's Creed. Now, of course, you go into the whole topic of well, how do you keep it Assassin's Creed but make it different, you know? So, right, that's a good point. Uh, you know how much how much of the formula do you change? Right, adding in a eagle that you can fly around for a little bit is not necessarily the best way to go about re breathing new life into your series, but yeah, the, you so, can fly an eagle, dog on it. Come on. So Brock brings up two points that I agree with. Uh, and the second point, I 100% agree with because that's what made me want to play the game. Uh, so the first part he says is that they learned from Breath of the Wild. And I can definitely see that in in, in and alone. Uh, but the bow gameplay in Traversal has improved. Um, and the bow gameplay was amazing. I loved it. It does look <laughs> cool. Yes. Uh, the part that that I loved so much was when he kind of like during one of the early bits of the Xbox trailer uh, or Xbox gameplay bit, he like hopped off of a tree or hopped out of it and just like sniped this dude down in slow motion. Uh, All the Matrix style. Yeah, and I literally, when I saw that, just went, oh, shit! Like, that was awesome! <laughs> that was awesome. I was like, I want to do that! <laughs> so... Some trailers, I don't know if it was a gameplay trailer or just a normal CGI trailer, but uh, he takes out his bow and he kills three people with three bows that he shoots from that. Three arrows he shoots from that. Yeah. So that's yeah. going to be awesome. So I think mm -hmm. improvement upon those, along with this new eagle, may not be enough per se. Unless I don't know what numbered Assassin's Creed we're on, but this is like the point five of it, maybe. Uh, so I think it definitely was cool to watch. It's got me interested. Uh, it's really funny that it's in Egypt, considering Magic: The Gathering is currently in Egypt. Uh, it seems like many of the marketers and people who come up with these ideas are kind of on the same page. Uh, everybody's going back to World War One and Two. We got Egypt coming out nowhere. There's like three new pirate games that got announced. Apparently, we all are on the same page. Um, Assassin's Creed Amonkhet. Wait a minute. Basically, <laughs> let's talk about pirate oh. games. All right. <laughs> all right. All if you want to add anything about Origins, go ahead. I, I, nothing, I, nothing specific about Origins. There's a couple okay. other things I want to briefly talk about. Um, Ubisoft conference that I'm excited for. Yes. But yes, pirate games. And I don't mean um, pirating games. I mean actual pirate games. Let's talk about the one that came from Ubisoft. Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones. Uh, this is Black Flag's pirate ship mechanics and everything realized in full form is the best way to put that. What yeah. It's very realistic looking. The gameplay was from pre-alpha. I don't know if anyone caught that. I did, and I, I want to tell everyone that I caught it. <laughs> um it seemed interesting, and having seen Sea of Thieves, which we'll get to when we talk about Xbox, having seen <laughs> Sea of Thieves, it was like, everyone's got the same memo that we should make a pirate game, and everyone's right. going about it in a slightly different way, but it looks like the common undertone is, be a pirate with your friends and make a crew. Now, I will say, I enjoy yeah. pirates, and I want to point out that yesterday, while I was at Origins, I bought a game called Rum and Pirates, because I like rum and pirates and i want to drink rum while being, while being a, pirate. a pirate so <laughs> knew where that was going <laughs> so i do to say i am i enjoy pirates uh there's a game called sid meyer's pirates from like the early 2000s that was on like the xbox it's on pc and that's a really good pirate game i haven't personally played it i've seen someone else play a lot of it and it's a really cool pirate game where you kind of like go around and conquer and do a little bit of real-time strategy or sorry turn-based strategy but also at the same time you do sword fighting and this is pretty this is an older game so it's not like assassin's creed level of sword fighting uh it's basically just watching for patterns and clicking the button to fight back but it was a cool pirate game but that being the extent of pirate games i've seen besides black flag having not played it yet which i do have because it was free this seemed interesting and i'm curious to see how it all works with multiple people because i feel like if you me and freak show can go be um if we can go be pirates and loot the seven seas i feel like we'd have a lot of fun i don't know yeah, it looks it looks like it'll be cool i have full faith that it will be a good game mechanic and gameplay wise because in black flag and even before black flag with um assassin's creed 3 and then after Black Flag, you had Rogue for the 360. You, they all had the basically pirate, the shipboarding and sailing aspect and all that. And they really nailed those. 
Yeah. And that's what I heard, and that's what everyone told me was that's the best part about the game. Right. Uh, honestly, in Black Flag, when I played it, I did more of the pirate stuff than probably more assassin stuff. So, you know, story wise, you know, I suppose it had its reasons, whatever. That's not the point. But um, <clears throat> I think it will be a good game because Ubisoft, they know how to do pirates. Take that as you will. They know how to do pirates. Yeah, they, they definitely do, and that's why I think it'll be a good game. It's just a matter of how long-lasting it'll be, or if it'll be like a smaller game with a good story and maybe a little bit of multiplayer that was never fully realized. I, obviously, we have to wait and see, but I'm definitely intrigued is the best way to put right. that. Honestly, I don't see a pirate game in terms of like that and even Sea of Thieves having a story to them. So I think this is one of those things where it'd be okay to just ignore a story mm -hmm. and just go straight for like a multiplayer aspect. Yeah. That's another thing is that would be a really cool idea. It's just a matter of battlefront, how? you know, right. how that worked out where it was just all that and people expect a story. And also would it, you know, I feel like there's a good story that could be had there. So I hope they don't right. do that, but um, uh, I'm, I'm more of a story person. So I tend to agree. I hope they don't do it, but I mean, I want multiplayer, of course, but yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so what else did you want to add about Ubisoft? Because that's all I have uh, that I can got, think of. We got a look at Far Cry 5. That's right. First that I'm also that. interested in. That looks like it's going to be an awesome game. Oh, um, yeah. So I just... Uh, I'm going to say this, but you should really go watch the gameplay trailers from... Uh, Ubisoft on Far Cry 5 because it looks amazing. You have a dog too, a, a fang for hire. Yeah, that was pretty so, cool. American yeah. McGee's Scrapland. Yep, that, that sounds about right. <laughs> so uh, it looks interesting. I'm even more excited for it. I believe it comes out next spring, spring of 2018, I'll say. Yeah, that it. sounds about right. Um, I know. I know that uh, the Skull and Bones game isn't until like late next year. Uh, that's right. why we were seeing pre-alpha gameplay. But uh, yeah, the Far Cry thing is in the spring, probably. I can scroll down this article. It probably mentioned it somewhere in here. Keep right. talking, Grunt. Um, so outside of that, I'm also excited for The Crew 2. I downloaded this game, the original The Crew, um, back when it was free with Xbox's Games with Gold a while ago. I don't even remember. Uh, it's not the best best racing game in terms of how everything controls and steers and all that stuff, but it is just downright fun to play. Mm -hmm. I remember a time when I was playing with Freak Show, uh, the game was lagging so badly at that point. I was driving along an area next to the Colorado River, and Freak Show just, boom, appeared, stopped in front of me, <laughs> and I hit him and just, like, flew off to the right and into the river so it's many memories like that that make me want the crew too oh yeah um i think that's on your dvr which by the way is in the footer of the xbox or not the xbox the uh, <laughs> frantic talks the xbox <laughs> yeah it's, it's in the uh, frantic talks website uh, at the bottom under xbox live if you click on either of those that'll take you to our gamer tags uh our dvr accounts if you want to watch our clips uh, you should be able to find some of his funny crew two clips so yes um so i'm excited for that they're also ex Expanding the vehicles that you can drive. You can drive land vehicles. You can pilot boats. You can pilot planes if you want. Mm -hmm. Helicopters. So I'm. it looks interesting. I'm anxious to give it a try at some point. Sounds good. Only other thing I think really worth mentioning in my mind from the Ubisoft conference was Beyond Good and Evil 2 is a thing. Yes, that was something people were wanting to hear a lot more about, but ended up only getting to hear that it's a thing, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yes. I don't want to say missed opportunity, but definitely they didn't get to capitalize on that. So, yes. All right, so we're so, running a little short for time. Um, right. So I think rapid we'll breeze fire, through. So. Yeah, we'll rapid fire through Bethesda and then get to Xbox. Uh, so, and I think that's easy enough because Bethesda wasn't that crazy, I don't think. Uh, it was at midnight, so I suppose they were like, people aren't going to be up late watching us. Well, midnight Eastern, that is. Uh, uh, they really didn't have too much to show off either. Yeah, no, there was... So, uh, the biggest thing was Wolfenstein 2. That's uh, amazing, by the way. 
and they're doing Fallout and Doom in virtual reality or virtual fucking reality if you're talking about Doom. Um, <laughs> in Skyrim, they continue to milk the cow that is Skyrim. Is I've seen many people say it, and it's true. The game is six years old at this point. Uh, but you're going to be able to put Link in the Switch as an amiibo, and he'll be Link in the uh, in Skyrim. So you get to play as Link in Skyrim. So I, that was the thing that like my jaw dropped out. I was like, oh shit, that makes sense, since it'll be on the Switch. Uh, but other than that, that's I mean, nothing else really came out of it. They were kind of just like uh, showing off stuff we kind of knew about. Uh, right. The Bethesda Land thing they did was actually really cool. I kind of liked that. Because uh, it fits their style of come to our little play park and enjoy your time, and uh, they're very their games aren't family friendly, but they started the whole conference out with like kids of the developers and workers talking about their parents making video games for a living. And I um, thought that was cool how they did that. Yes, I really enjoyed that. That was really cool. Uh, but ultimately, the the conference itself uh, there was like thirty minutes in Bethesda Land, and I don't even know what happened after that because I turned it off because I was like, oh, that's all you got for me. Okay. Uh, they. Had, they- Announced a new DLC for Dishonored 2, which I'm anxious for that. <clears throat> and then, oh yeah, ESO, they talked about that, showing off Morrowind, even though it just came out. So I feel like that was, we already know about this. Yeah, thanks. Right. Um, I, think, I think there was something else they showed off about it. Like, they teased future content releases for the game. Content yes, I do. Release, future content releases. There we go. PR talk again. <laughs> uh, yeah, that. Uh, no, you got to like get it really in... Uh, damn, Grunt Dad just called kids overrated. Ouch, that hurts. <laughs> that um, hurts. <laughs> I think uh, Brock brings a good point that ESO needs to die so we can get Elder Scrolls 6. I feel like that won't be the case. Like, yeah, ESO, you know, Elder Scrolls Online will be great uh, for a long term Elder Scrolls thing, but we still expect new installments to enhance the story because. I feel like in MMOs, people don't pay too much attention to the story. I mean, I guess I could be wrong, but I still couldn't tell you the story of World of Warcraft, having played all the expansions up to uh, the latest one. Wait, uh, is I, the story I have, of World of Warcraft? Yeah, there's like there's like cutscenes <laughs> and everything, dude. Like, there's a whole story, like the Lich King and all that stuff showing up. There was a reason behind it, but uh, I don't know. It's just not something that I feel like is a thing. So if they want to continue the story and expand the world they have instead of doing it in an MMO, right. which is kind of cool because you can just kind of freely explore it without having to worry about a whole storyline to follow besides a quest line of some sort, uh, it just seems like they need to do a whole another one on top of the game. Uh, but, you know, resources are limited, I assume, so they can only do so much. Right. Uh, but the good thing about an MMO is you let it run and only need a few people to moderate it, to be right. fair. It's basically what I'm... Uh, getting here is ESO needs to go away and we need a new Elder Scrolls game, period. Yeah, basically. I mean, I'd be I'd be okay with the latter half of that, in general. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm quite alright with the ESO staying. I have friends who play it that really enjoy it, so I don't want to just take that away from them so we get another Elder Scrolls, but if that's what needs to happen, I feel like that's the better play. Okay. Just my opinion. Right. Uh, but otherwise, I don't think anything else is really announced. Uh... You know, Skyrim and Link. Oh, Quake Champions uh, is getting a new playable character. Yay. Which is the guy from Wolfenstein. Um, <clears throat> Heroes of Skyrim. Within. The Evil uh, Within 2. Well, yeah. Something else I was going to mention. That yeah, looks it's Evil Within 2. Uh, that, looked, that looked interesting for sure. Uh, but otherwise, that was basically it from Bethesda. Uh, I was excited for Bethesda, looking for it. They had a lot of ads on Twitch, like, check out what we're going to be, anou- like, we really need to tune in, we're going to announce some cool stuff, and then it just kind of was really underwhelming. So, a lot, a lot of hype, not much deliverance, I, I would say. All right, that seems to be a lot of the general consensus of what people thought of after it, too. Mm-hmm. So, as with all of these conferences, you know, there's stuff people are going to be really excited for, and then stuff is just, some stuff is just going to be like, eh, well, that's not so interesting. Yeah, but let's talk about interesting in the Xbox portion of the announcement, the last bit of E3 that we will be talking about. Now, I will say I only got to watch the first couple minutes of it, but uh, the Xbox announcement had a lot, and let's talk with the biggest one, the Xbox, abbreviated, otherwise known as the Xbox One X. So the Xbox One X is what Project Scorpio is actually called. From this point on, we will now be calling it Project Scorpio. Uh, so, it's still Scorpio, and it's yeah. still Scorpio in my heart. Xbox is really bad at naming their consoles, apparently. 
Uh, but the Project Scorpio, which we have known pretty much the details about besides a price point when it's coming and other random things, uh, we knew like the hardware specs and everything, it is coming November 7th at a $500 price tag, and it is extremely small. It is the smallest Xbox to date, which amazes me uh, because of how big the one started as and because of how much tech is in this thing, it's just going to be like a... It's like, it's smaller than a regular size laptop, says Brock, and they show a picture of it like your Xbox One controller fits on it, but you couldn't fit another controller on it. Uh, right. That's that's about how big it is. It's, it's small, um, which which is nice. I, I, I like how small it is. Uh, and uh, it's got liquid cooling, by the way. That's fucking amazing. I just want to throw that out there. Uh, but more or less we knew about it, but the price point is 500 and it'll come out November 7th. And I think that's actually, honestly, a pretty fair price point for what it'll be doing, which is 4K gaming. Considering the original Xbox One released at that price point, mm-hmm. and it's nowhere even close to, in terms of power and hardware, that's inside the Scorpio. Yeah. Um, I think that's very, very good price point for the Scorpio One X or Xbox whatever you want to call it yeah and just in case uh, you guys if you guys didn't hear it yes the scorpio engine by the way that's why it was called project scorpio but uh the xbox one x does abbreviate to xbox you know uh which i think kind of fits with the idea that we had talked about not too long ago where they're trying to remove the idea of console exclusive games like you can only play a 360 game on a 360 an xbox one game on an xbox one uh, and that is further backed up by the fact that now Xbox original Xbox games will be getting backwards compatibility, which is oh, awesome. Yes. And um, what I think is very cool about that is, <clears throat> to me, from when they announced it, it does not sound like it's going to be exclusive to the Scorpio. It's going to be even your current Xbox you own mm-hmm. now. So that's going to be very cool. If yeah, that's and it how it is. It should be an emulator is that it you know it's it should be an emulator so that's how they're going to be able to play all this it's the first time we've gotten a console that essentially goes back further than a previous generation now the nintendo wii uh u does have the uh virtual console type thing i forget what it's actually called it might actually be called that but you you can play older games on it assuming you buy the games through there though it's not like you just have the disc of halo 2 lying around you chuck it in and it goes uh that that will be the case here it seems like uh so that's what's really cool um but those were the biggest things because it's strictly related to the xbox uh but otherwise there was a lot of different stuff announced and honestly having only watched a couple minutes of it because i had to uh, jet uh grunt you probably could speak a lot more to what happened and everything they had said uh well they showed off the annual forza um Mm -hmm. you know that that's a staple with a new Xbox, and pretty much every year, really. Uh, Forza Motorsport 7. Uh, they showed off a new Metro game. So, Metro 2033 yeah. and yes. Metro Last Light. Uh, it's getting a new game. I don't know whether it's like a... It's a third game in the series, but I don't know if it's like a direct trilogy or whatever. Um, that I don't Metro know. Metro Exodus. Looks yeah, Metro... Really cool. Mm-hmm. Really cool. I'm excited for it. I loved um, 2033 and Last Light when I played it. And I played 2033 only the first, like, I only played about an hour of it, but I did enjoy the time I spent playing it. Right. Yes. Um, 2033 was good. Last Light I played a lot of because I was writing a review for it at that time. Mm. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it. It's based off of a novel mm. by someone that shares the same story. So. At times, the story felt a little weird, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. So I'm excited for that. Um, sea of Thieves, look, another pirate game. Yeah, there, here's our other pirate game, by the way. I think Sea of Thieves was the last one I saw, because I remember all this that you're telling uh, me. Let's see what else. There's a new Ori game coming out. So yeah, Ori. Ori, um, Ori in the Blind Forest. This one is Ori and the... Uh, something to do with Wisps. Yeah, I don't remember um, the name of it. I'm I, trying to find it in the article because I feel like they would mention it. Right. Oh, they didn't mention it. Well, that's disappointing. Actually, the trailer for that was amazing. I, you know, usually when I watch trailers, I'm either really excited for it or just a cold emotionless human being. Mm. But the end of this trailer was a little sad. I have to admit, it is very on Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I misread that message. Wow, I need my glasses. 
Yeah. My new one. Thank you, Brock. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so that, thank you. Yeah, that was definitely... I think I saw that trailer. Um, also, there was Crackdown 3, right? Crackdown 3 with friggin' Terry Crews. I will buy that game just for him. If you love Terry Crews, check out the trailer. I watched it because Grunt was ranting about how, and raving about how amazing he was in the, tra- in the trailer. It's pretty great. Uh, give that I a view. I doubt I'll buy the game specifically for that case, but man, the trailer for it is awesome because of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, Anthem. Now, Anthem. this is one I have yet to watch anything about. Can you give me a five-second rundown? Uh, well, it's it seems to be like an open-world game. Uh, you're piloting a quasi it's an exoskeleton basically that you're piloting it looks cool okay um a lot of people are comparing it to destiny personally i don't get the get the similarities maybe that's just me okay um, but you'll be able to go out in the world form these teams with other friends of yours and explore do missions and uh they've got events that pop up every now and then so that's probably why people are getting where people are getting the comparison for destiny or to destiny from at this point. Yeah. But you'll be able to upgrade your, uh, suit with armor and weapons that you find and, or upgrades that you find. So it looks interesting. Um, it's about really all I know about it. Cause the trailer didn't show off. The gameplay trailer didn't show off really too much of anything. Just, you know, gameplay. All right. Well, I mean, that sounds interesting enough to me. So, yeah, it's kind of like a open world Titanfall, dare I say. Okay. Well, I mean, with an exoskeleton, that makes you much more powerful than the average human. Right. I can see that. It looks interesting. I'll probably check it out at some point, but. Okay. Um, I have a headline here that Minecraft gets 4K graphics. Oh, yes. Minecraft does get 4K graphics because you want to play a blocky pixelated game on your super powerful xbox one x you know um what i can do is go get some legos in studying high def quality and build them in my house <laughs> right so, i mean I, that's fine I, I feel like running the game at a hilarious frames per second would be amazing but other than that uh, uh minecraft does get cross play though which is a good point to bring up uh, microsoft you hear pushing that cross play once again <clears throat> take less so <clears throat> yeah come on sony <laughs> uh and lastly let's talk one one last thing uh because i think this will be the last good point sea of thieves we mentioned it earlier uh yeah, let's talk right. about that um because i actually got to watch the gameplay uh so we've already described skull and bones uh pirates treasure crew looting killing all that fun stuff sea of thieves pirates treasure looting killing all that fun stuff Pirates. The difference is uh, graphics. Sea of Thieves seems more cartoonish. Uh, Skull and Bones is much more realistic. So I feel like that isn't the only defining characteristic, but Sea of Thieves looks like the gameplay is either going to be really, really... Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Good or bad, basically, is the best way to put it. It's going to be hit or miss. That's what I meant to say. Right. I think oh, Sea of Thieves is done by Rare, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's that's what As Brock see, is saying. Brock, yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I think I agree. It'll be hit and miss, but I think the main selling point to this game is going to be gathering up your friends and getting a crew together and going out. I'm very interested to see what kind of multiplayer aspect it will have. Yeah, this one's been like confirmed. It'll be multiplayer. So. I mean, the other one had was too, but this one we kind of got to see it. Right. I don't know. I, I haven't seen any confirmation as to how they're going to go about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm interested to see how that pans out. Yeah, me too. It's I. It's added to my list of games I'm definitely going to keep an eye on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think it'll be interesting, and I hope once we learn more, it'll definitely be something we look at getting. Uh, we we definitely want to form up a pirate crew, Brock. Uh, we just aren't sure which game we'll form it in. And it all depends on when they're out, I suppose. Uh, I know I want to. So. Right. 
Sea of Thieves does come out early next year, is what uh, the site says. So it looks like we'll get that before we get that uh, Skull and Bones or whatever it's called, because I already forgot. Skull and Bones. Yeah. I think there's only a few other random things that they announced that were kind of like, oh, uh, you know, whatever. Um, I know Cuphead. Cuphead got, gets a release date. Yeah, September it actually got a release 29th. date. Yeah. 29th to 28th. I think it's the 29th, though. I don't remember. Yeah, don't that's, uh, that's definitely cool because that's been shown in the past like four e3s and still hasn't shown up right um, i suppose better safe than sorry right at this point uh and the only other thing we forgot to mention uh to cap everything off back in the sony one is destiny 2's release date's different oh. it, it, it was the 8th of the september until they announced that it's the 6th of september hey the cabal are ahead of schedule man unless you're on pc and it's like the 24th of october or something like that right do you know and what else they announced? All the betas. Right. If you pre-ordered it uh, on for PlayStation 4, you get beta access on July 18th. If you mm-hmm. pre-ordered it for the Xbox One, you will get access to the beta on July 19th. Open beta to everyone on PS4 and Xbox One starts July 21st. July 23rd, the console beta will end, and in late August, the PC will receive its own beta. Yes, so luckily the PC release is not going to be too late. Uh, a lot of people were worried it was going to be delayed by a lot. Uh, a month and a half to me isn't that bad, personally. I don't think it's honestly that bad at all. Uh, it's probably just, you know, there's a lot of PC ports of games that are terrible right now that just get released in terrible form. Uh, the most recent being Arkham Knight and uh, what was that? Quantum Break. Those were very recent wins that yes. were terrible PC ports. So... <clears throat> Better safe than sorry, in my opinion. I don't think it's that bad that it's an hour, a month and a month and a half later. Uh, I know some people are upset. You know, if you're a PC gamer and you don't and you want to play Destiny, but you have to wait even longer than console players, you might feel a little. Uh, oh, what's the right term? I'm not respected or something. I can't think of the right way to put that. But uh, I personally think it's okay, and that's not because I get it before you. I just think you know, again, better safe than sorry. We've seen too many developers get burned by releasing their game in terrible condition on PC, and they lose a lot of money for it because they have to issue refunds and all that stuff. So uh, right. they're playing it rule, smart. Golden rule of gaming should be anyhow of uh, releasing a game rather uh, should be release it when it's ready. And that's why Cuphead's taken so long to get to us. So four years. Yeah, a long time. So uh, I think that about does it. Uh, everything we uh, everything we noted about E3, I'm sure there was a little more that we either forgot or... Uh, yeah, had some stuff. Uh, there's a new Bioware. Yeah, that's true. Anthem is the new Bioware game. What am I talking about? Sports, yeah. sports, more sports, more sports. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yeah, Battlefront 2, which we actually kind of talked about on the last episode because it kind of all got leaked beforehand. So uh, either way, that's all pretty awesome. Uh, I'm excited for all the stuff that's coming. Uh, there's some stuff that I imagine will not be as good as we were promised on this past week. And I'm sure there are things that knock it out of the park or went under the radar. Either way, uh, we'll find out. Right. And what better way to find out than to follow Frantic Talks? Because we'll talk right. about it. Either way. <laughs> I think that about does it for us. Uh, who, Unless in, you have something. In your opinion, who do you think won E3? The annual question. Who won E3? Hmm... It's between a Nintendo and Xbox. Because PlayStation, we already knew it all, besides the VR. Ubisoft was interesting, but I was not interested in what they showed. And the Bethesda conference was boring and not interesting. So Xbox showed a lot of cool stuff and a lot of promise, but at the same time, you got to hope their console exclusive wins. Uh, And Nintendo announced all the stuff everyone wanted. And didn't know it was coming, but we kind of figured that needs to happen. So it's really a toss-up between them two for me. What about you? I'm going to disagree with your answer and That's say fair. us as the players win. There you go. He got the right answer. Because we get all this cool stuff to look forward to. And the only downside to that is our wallets and bank accounts are the real losers here. Yes, the losers of the bank accounts, the winners of the players, which is always cliche, but accurate as fuck so uh good answer i think <laughs> as grunt right. dad calls you a chump all right so i'll take <laughs> <laughs> i think that about does it for us guys anything else to add grunt or uh we'll wrap I it have, up here i have nothing 
see you again for E3 in another year. Yeah, exactly. We'll see you guys next year for E3 coverage. But I mean, we're not going anywhere. We'll see you next week, of course, on the Frantic Talks podcast. But before we do that, let's oh, talk course. about how you can get all the details and information and conversation, continuation, all that fun stuff for us here. So if you are wanting to continue this conversation, do you uh, agree with us? Uh, who do you think won E3 besides the players? Uh, let us know on Twitter. Uh, that's the easiest way, at least. I'm at FranticJ3. He is at Onyx Spartan, O-N-Y-X Spartan, all in word. Or you can hit up at Frantic underscore Talks. That is our official Twitter account. That is where you also you know follow it and get updates on when we go live with the podcast, along with posting articles and podcasts. Uh, you can also follow our special uh, podcast, Ghost Freak Show, at uh, Freak Show 187. I'm going to get to it in a minute, Brock, just a second. <laughs> I know Grunt's. Spoilers, man. Spoilers. I know Grunt's teething up here. Uh, we got a. Uh, also, if you want to catch this live and join in the conversation like Ethius, Brock, and Grunt Dad all did today, you can head over to twitch.tv forward slash frantic talks, all one word, and that is where you can hit the follow button. We go live every Saturday, usually, at 3 p.m. Eastern, usually. The asterisk is because sometimes we don't go live or sometimes we get a weird scheduling issue. Today we went live like 10 minutes late because of my uh, schedule. Either way. A picture, also, calling out a picture of an asterisk like above one of your shoulders when you yeah, say just like boop <laughs> it just like pops up yeah um if, if uh you missed the live stream and you want to definitely not wait till monday to hear the audio version slash see the video version you can actually get the video version of roughly an hour or two after we go live if you subscribe on youtube head over to youtube search up frantic talks hit that subscribe button and every saturday you will usually get the podcast a little after we go live, closer to 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, early access to the podcast before all the, the uh, sheeple on iTunes and Stitcher listen to it. Sheeple? Uh, wow. Also, head over to facebook.com forward slash frantic talks, all one word. Hit the like button like 134 other people have done so you can get a more Facebook version of Twitter where we post podcast articles, all that fun stuff, and you can have a much more in-depth conversation not limited to 140 characters per tweet. And if all that fails, head over to franictalks.com, the mothership, where you will find everything I just mentioned in the footer, along with every Monday, a podcast, every Wednesday, a weekly column by either Grunt, me, or Freak Show, and on Fridays, you will find the Chronicles of Awe, a wrestling simulator monthly update, but every week, it's hard to describe. It's really good, though, because if you like WWE wrestlers and some other random ones, uh, you definitely will get a good kick out of what Freak Show is doing with storylines related to those characters. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I think if all else fails, I fail to mention magic.franitalks.com again. If all else fails, <laughs> zero one zero one zero out of ten times, what what can you do, Grunt? Learn to translate binary code to begin with. <clears throat> <laughs> that wasn't binary. That was just me being. There's got to be a zero in the beginning. Anyway, sorry. All right, but just direct yourself to your nearest search engine, and you search Frank Talks, you will find us. Yes, that is exactly what you'll do. 110 times out of 10, you'll find us. And uh, I want to mention this now because I, I, I briefly said it. Uh, Brock brought up a mention of a Discord server. We have it pretty much ready to go. We need to do a quick little test on it to make sure everything's okay. And we will send out a Discord chat slash voice channel invite to both the Frantic Talks General and Frantic Talks Magic if you guys need any, uh, if you guys want to talk to us about any of the, those things. Um, we're just finalizing the final pieces of it and we'll get it out to you. Uh, I know it would have benefited you three greatly to have people discussing in there, but either way, we will send that out. Follow at frantic talks on, or at frantic underscore talks on Twitter or me and grunt or all three. Uh, you will definitely get it from us on there. So one of us will yell about it. Yes. One of us will for sure. All right, guys, that about does it for us. Hope you guys enjoyed our E3 cap. I know this was a longer episode than normal, but Hey, it was E3. It's about how these episodes go. Um, either way, I think that about does it. Grunt, you got anything else to add? Nope, not at all. All right, well, I'm Frantic. I'm Grunt. And we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>